everyone, we are at the final chapter for this book and then we are done. We actually made it. This is chapter 28 of America's Story 2, the very last chapter of our book, of our history book, entitled The American Dream. The idea of the American dream has been a driving force for American history for centuries. The promise of freedom and opportunity in this country are a major aspect of the American dream. But with those freedoms, there are also responsibilities. American freedoms. As Americans, we enjoy basic freedoms that include freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom of want, and freedom from fear. Can you believe that we have come to the end of this section of our journey through American history? Unbelievable. I hope you have learned a lot, and even more importantly, had your heart and mind touched by our story. As I tell my own children, the author, not me, learning and wanting to learn is a personal decision. I never want to write a story for you, my young friends, that will answer all of your questions. I want to leave you with questions, for which you will find the answers. That's good. We are learning that America is an amazing and unique country. Here we have freedoms that most people of the world only dream of. The American dream has been the driving force behind the generations of people who have come from all over the world to build this country. But what exactly is the American dream? I believe that the dream varies from person to person. It is as unique as each heart and soul of every American. For some, it has everything to do with status, money, and prestige. It is the drive to become financially wealthy. For others, it's to raise their children to honor and obey God, obey God, while still others work to do both. There is a common thread that runs through every heartfelt American dream. Mr. Thomas Jefferson's words, penned in the Declaration of Independence, says it the best. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are li life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This section of our story would not be complete without my sharing of some great, without my sharing of something of great importance. We are Americans, this is true, but we are something far more important than this. We are the children of the one and only living God. I want my friends, both young and not so young, to hear this with an open heart. I want you to ponder this long after the last page of this book has been read. I want you to make this part of who you are. Our appointment here on earth is not to be the best Americans we can be. We are put, on, we are put here on this planet for a much bigger purpose than that. We are put here to be ambassadors of Christ. Jesus came to the world to seek and save the lost, American and non-American. History is not a cyclical, is not a, is not cyclical story. It's a progressive story written by the most knowledgeable author. Cyclical, um, just like every, every other well-written story, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end, a glorious end. We are part of this story. We are here for a reason. We are Americans for a reason. And the word for this chapter is cyclical. Something that is reoccurring, happening in cycles. Cyclical. Cil cyclical. 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 It didn't just happen that America was founded on principles that had never been seen before in history. And just like everything, good and bad, that has ever happened in the history of this world, God has a reason for it. With freedom comes responsibility. With the freedom to worship him comes the opportunity to learn about him and have a personal relationship with him. We have freedom to make money. With the freedom to make money comes the opportunity to help those in need. With freedom to have an education comes the opportunity to learn to read his word and to help translate it into other languages. In many ways, the American dream, with its wish for a better life and lasting happiness, is not really just the American dream. It is the dream of every human being. It is only in America that we have so much opportunity to make that dream come true. In reality, the dream is in the heart of every human being from birth. It could be said that the pursuit of happiness is another name for the God-shaped hole. 
that was created in each of us. In other words, the American dream should be called the human need. As humans, we tend to think, if I only had blank, I would be happy. In reality, living for him is the only true happiness we will ever have. I sincerely hope and pray that each of my friends reading this story have personally asked Jesus to be their Lord and Savior. Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30 Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Sometimes life gets heavy. Whether they are an American or not, people get tired. The pursuit of happiness is exhausting. In America, we have the freedom and the privilege to work hard and see the fruits of our labor. But it is important not to forget from whom those blessings really come. So I challenge you to think about it. Why do you think God decided to have you live here in America, the land of plenty? Why do you think he chose you to be a part of this generation? He could have chosen to put you in the time of the Civil War, but he didn't. And it's our responsibility to listen to our maker and learn what that purpose is. God bless you, my friends. I hope to see you in the next section of our story, Volume 3. Until then, keep learning. America the Beautiful by Catherine Lee Bates O oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood. From she to shining sea. O beautiful for pilgrim feet, Whose stern and passion stress, A thoroughfare for freedom beat, Across the wilderness. America, America, God mend thine every flaw, Confirm thy soul in self-control, Thy liberty in law. O beautiful for heroes proved, In liberating strife, Who more than self their country loved, and mercy more than life. America, America, may God thy gold refine, till all thy success be nobleness, and every gain divine. O beautiful for patriot dream, that sees beyond the years, thine alabaster city gleam, undimmed by human tears. America, America, God shed his grace on thee, and crown thy good with brotherhood, from sea to shining sea. In just a hundred years, America changed a lot, but still wasn't quite finished because there were still more states to add before it finally ended up with the same boundaries that we have today. Catherine Lee Bates. Catherine Lee Bates was a well-educated woman. She had a degree from Wesley, a woman's college in Massachusetts and has taught there as an English teacher for over 30 years. She also studied for a year at England's prestigious Oxford University. In 1893, Bates traveled west to teach a summer class in Colorado Springs, Colorado. On the way, she stopped at the 1893 Chicago World Fair. The sites were ins there inspired her lines about alabaster cities. Bates wrote her lyrics at the famous Antlers Hotel in Colorado Springs, the building here is the second Antler Hotel. The first burnt down in 1898. A monument commemorating Catherine Lee Bates' song on the Pikes Peak. The stunning view from Pikes Peak in Colorado also influenced her lyrics. Though she is most famous for America the Beautiful, Bates also helped popularize the idea of Mrs. Claus with the publication of her Christmas poem, Goody Santa Claus in the 1880s. We, the people of the United States of America, have been blessed in ways that other country citizens can't even imagine. With blessings come responsibilities. Discuss this with your parents or teacher. What responsibilities do we have as citizens of this country and as ambassadors for Jesus? And that is the end of the book. So finish up the last little bits of your history workbooks. And that is it for this school year.